three, two, one. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Paul here, realestatepodcastshow.com. I have um, a wonderfully informative and maybe a little bit scary of a podcast to do today, something I've been uh, hoping to do just to um, uh, add another uh, another element, another chapter to, to the real estate related stories. And I have um, two amazing people who, who have a, a, a really, really cool podcast that they have um, called Parkdale Haunt. And I want to welcome Alex and Emily uh, to Real Estate Podcast Show for uh, a little bit of a story behind the story, because that's uh, always been one of my favorite things about movies and music and everything is the story behind it all. So I want to uh, sort of dig in and find out about that. So welcome, uh, welcome to both of you. Thank Hi. you. Thanks for, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, thank you guys for taking the time to join me. So I guess, uh, again, you probably had these questions thrown out at you in, in, you know, in, in a million different ways and maybe the same ones. I hope it's not exactly the same ones, but uh, I'd like to, again, find out for, for me, the first thing I thought of, uh, 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 in my in my experience is that I've been into enough haunted houses. My wife grew up in what she believes was a haunted house in the beach. Um, so she's she's more into the horror podcast than I am. Um, so trying to find out about the origin of the story and, and, and how much of it uh, is from real life, how much of it is from, uh, you know, other stories you've heard. So I'm, I'm really curious to sort of hear, uh, you know, how you guys uh, stumbled upon this. Sure. Well, if we want to go way back, um, I'm a I'm a dual citizen. And so I spent part of my childhood in California, Hillsborough, California, which is just south of San Francisco. Hmm. And the house that I was growing up in, I'm pretty sure was haunted. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of scratching in the walls at night and there was a really creepy basement. And so I always tell the story as my origin story of how I got into horror. But I was seven years old and I was exploring this basement and it kind of went into this dark crawl space yeah. and on the wall, there was this graffiti done in red. And so it was these arrows on the wall and I was following the wall and I got it into a more and more enclosed space in the basement. And I came out following these arrows and on the wall spray painted in red uh, was written, help me. I'm trapped. Oh my and God. it scared the living <laughs> oh daylights God. out of me. I was a little child. I scrambled out and um, I think that that has always caused me to have a fascination with haunted houses. And obviously that's something that Alex and I took to Parkdale Haunt. Oh my God, that, that already brings me into uh, moments that I've had where I've actually seen people, uh, not people, but I've seen it in like very possibly child's writing or, or very sort of distressed writing saying, do not buy this house. Uh, oh, written, written, written in some places of, of a home and I did not know what to make of it I just got goosebumps uh, and sort of started to think or, or think or thought the worst uh, so that definitely sounds like a, a you know a, a very uh, uh, what do you call it a formative experience not not a great one but uh, you know that that sounds like it would lead to somewhere else that's uh, that's wow that's amazing well, it's a happy ending because no one was hurt and uh, it, uh, it led to a fascination with a genre that I love. But Alex, yeah. and I, um, Alex, I don't know if you want to talk about the more local inspiration that we had. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the, the big inspiration when it came to like where the podcast actually came from was um, <laughs> there was a there was a Toronto Life article written back in I want to say 2017 that was called The Renovation from Hell. And it was this piece about this couple who bought a house and, you know, through multiple, for multiple reasons, you know, the whole thing was a big disaster. And one day Emily and I were talking about it and the elevator pitch that she gave me was, what if we did a, we were talking about doing a podcast together. And she was like, what if we did a thing where it was the renovation from hell, but actually. Wow. And, uh, and so that's, that was the genesis was just, just working on this idea of like getting a house and then trying to fix it up, but it all just falling apart. And then that was that was the jumping off point. And then from there, we built the rest of the story. And we both, um, uh, Emily has lived in the Parksville area. I've lived sort of around the edge of it for a long time. 
um, you know, sort of an area that's like very familiar to us. It's an area yeah. with a lot of history in the city. Yes, um, and a yes. lot of and a lot of big big uh some there's some sort of spooky looking houses in there i'm sure inside they're beautiful i'm sure they're all like three million dollars and like fully rent out indoors but in, outside some of them looking a little uh, spooky. well mm -hmm. as you say beautiful of course that is in the eye of the beholder and some people's <laughs> beautiful is that old dirt floor uh, that's got all the, you know, all the memories. I was just in one in, in, in the Danforth East York area recently. That was one of those early 1900, uh, again, sort of dirt cellar type floors that, uh, again, no one's done anything to and, uh, you know, sort of creepy in, in some ways. But the story you're talking about, I, I, I remember hearing that article, reading that article. And if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I'll probably have to verify this. I'll add something at the end of the podcast if I'm wrong. But I believe the story actually, because I, I remember reading it and it's about, I think there was a couple um, and one of the couple possibly committed suicide over. No, no, no I don't think so. Not in that, not in the story. Not in that in story, one? No. Okay. No, and that's okay. in the original story. I can't speak to anything that has happened in the years following the story, yeah. but in, okay. the, in this original story, it was a couple and they, the husband bought a house I think without consulting his wife. Yeah. And then they bought this house in Parkdale and they started renoing it. And then it was just a bunch of. So it know, was definitely in Parkdale. Yeah. So it, if, I believe it. Emily, am I correct on that one? I believe it was it. definitely in Parkdale. Um, and it caused a lot of conversation because um, people felt that it was a little over dramatic to call it uh a hell house oh, okay. uh, yes. because it, okay. it was yeah. just it was just a challenging renovation and they made some poor choices while <sighs> engaging in that renovation like um okay. i think they're they hired their contractor because he was a guy who just like was biking by them on the street and it was like <laughs> hey i'm a contractor want to hire me and they were like oh yeah sure come on in oh my yeah, god there, there, so there's a, a yeah a there, 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 there's a horror podcast on its own is uh, is, is hiring <laughs> hiring someone even more important than I'll say what I do for a living is that if you're hiring someone, you know, for a renovation and, and the, the degree of trust uh, and, and just the fact that, you know, you need to base, hand this person a bag of money and say, uh, you know, I need you to do this work and not run away with it because th there are there are entire websites and I, I keep pretty good track of, again, the ones you want to avoid that uh definitely made this rental from hell, which is the only reason I thought it sounded like another story, because I know there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of these yeah. stories that are around. So that, so that was the genesis, sort of the, 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 the spark of, of the idea. And then you guys obviously took it into um, something completely else. And I, I love, and maybe it's, you know, me being selfish, but again, I love uh, seeing, you know, or, and maybe if you're, you know, depending on your ages, but for me, I, I'm, I'm in my forties. So anytime in the eighties or nineties, when I was a kid and I ever saw a Toronto reference on a TV show, like I would freak out because you just never saw it, even if they were filming here. Um, so the fact that your show is, you know, of course it could have been anything could have been, you know, California haunt um but the fact that it's a toronto based story and um again i might have possibly gone into one of these houses um and when i hear the stories it kind of sounds like again uh i i, I may have it's to, to me that's such a cool connection so was 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 it always um you know going to be um a toronto or parkdale um story or or did it ever were there ever any ideas about having it sort of uh, base somewhere else just out of curiosity yeah it was it was really important to us to have it set in toronto okay um i've lived here i'm on lucky number 13 of my years living in toronto oh, wow. and for six of those i was living in parkdale yeah um so we just we wanted it to feel very real and that was definitely consideration as we wanted it to be representative of toronto we didn't want it toronto to be standing in as some other city uh we didn't want to pretend it was new york we wanted yeah. to kind of embrace the fact that this this is the area and by doing so we were able to kind of bring in a lot of i think realness to a supernatural story by talking about real places that people go real bars real restaurants real parks that kind of thing real neighborhoods yeah and um you did, you've done. yeah do you have anything to add to that alex yeah, I think that's, yeah, being, I mean, I've been here for about 16 years now, um, and uh, I'm originally from Northern Ontario, 
And uh, yeah, I think like there's there's a lot to mine in when it comes to storytelling in a city like this. There is a lot of history. There's a lot of space. There's a lot of things that kind of happen. It's, it's a great place just to set something because there's so much to go off of. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's true anywhere, but we, but Emily and I both live here. So we have a very like intimate knowledge of this place in a way that we wouldn't with a place like New York or a place like Vancouver or a place yeah. like even, sure. even like my hometown, I would still be like trying to remember, like, my knowledge is all out of date. I'd be like, I don't know. Like, is that still there? Like, is that bar still there? Yeah. So, um, and, uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it was, uh, it's a great place to, to set a spooky story in. Yeah. Yeah. And again, being, again, just for me, I have such, uh, and, and I've sort of gone on in, in rants about this for, I don't know why, and I don't know if anybody's listening to it, but uh, I I have always had a, a very deep respect. Uh, and for me, that's who I learn from is great storytellers. Um, I don't go to a lot of uh, real estate conferences and pay attention to the topic. Uh, I'm sort of drawn to the great storytellers um, when it comes to learning, you know, getting better at what I learned. So I've, I've learned more from, you know, um, from Francis Ford Coppola, from Spielberg, from, um, you know, great storytellers, uh, Scorsese, of course, for me. Um, and, and again, listening to you guys on your podcast, to me, again, just trying to um, follow along and, and sort of, again, envision the story, because again, it's, uh, it's so, it's so, it's so well done. I, I, you know, I love, of course, all the, uh, all the great sound effects. And I mean, they're just, uh, you know, everything's, everything's done like really, really well. And again, right now you guys are in, um, you're in season. Uh, we're heading into season two at the end season of two, September. Yeah. yeah. At the end of September. Right. Okay. Great. And we're and, 27th. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, again, obviously right in time for, you know, again, uh, not that fall necessarily uh, is, uh, is, is the, um, uh, the spooky season, but not, not that you need it to be, but uh, so it's, it's going right in around then. Um, so as far as, again, what, what you guys have planned for season two and, and future seasons, is there anything that, uh, uh, that you might be able to share? Or of course, I, I completely respect the idea of uh, keeping it a secret and uh, <laughs> you know, you'll have to, you'll have to listen, but uh, uh, is there, is there any plans that you guys have for, for this podcast, maybe for uh, other podcasts, any, any things like that in mind? I mean, I think for, sorry, you go ahead, Alex. Uh, yeah. I mean, like for, for season two, like most of it, uh, I don't want to give any like spoilers for it. No, I think that no. it, we're we're building on the we're building on the story that we left off on at, at the end of season one. So we're continuing on through there. What's going on with Claire? How are Judith and Owen going to deal with this? What are they? You know, like what's their plan going forth? And what is Claire's like? What is what is Claire out to do? Yeah. Um, because we we leave off on kind of a very odd note at the end of season one. So because something's definitely up, but. Yeah. Uh, what is what is up is uh, brought to light in season two. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. One thing I'll say that I I don't think a spoiler it's a spoiler, but it is perhaps a hint, which is just that it does open up a little bit, and we're able to take take our characters to different places in Toronto, and we're excited about that. They get the opportunity to explore the city a little bit more. Okay. That's uh, again that that sounds again really exciting to me i i was just and again this is what i do um you know trying to prepare for uh you know this interview which i i, I try to make sure that i i've got I've, again again I've, I've got a sort of a ballpark um again spectator because that's as much as it's going to be for me i'm never going to be on your side of the microphone with with the stories but um i was just re-listening to the christmas episode um, and to me, that was just, again, so, um, so brilliantly well done, because I'm uh, one of those people who watches A Christmas Carol probably about 30 times over the holidays, uh, and the old Alistair Sim one. Um, so I, I, I like that you had sort of a, a, a theme like that. But of course, again, the way the story was told and um, all the elements of it, again, that are specific to your show, uh, it was just, you know, really, really brilliantly done. So thank you. Uh, I think that I, I have to admit, I feel like that is 
probably one of my favorite episodes. Is it? Okay. Well, again, I, <laughs> I, I, a, I, I get I to say that. You might it. not be able to, but I get to. Uh, so, oh, yeah. so far, that that's my favorite. And of course, I'm, I'm looking forward to having other favorites because you're allowed to do that. Oh, yeah. Um, in, the, in the podcast world and, you know, whatever, uh, TV series, something, things like that. Something fun about that one is we got to work with the very brilliant Taylor Davis, who um, plays Austin Bird, our our lovable um, antagonist real estate developer. Yes. And Taylor Davis is such a brilliant actor and comedian. Can you tell so. why I specifically like that, that episode? <laughs> like you literally put two of my worlds together um, and, and, and did a great job on making it, uh, again, making, making that character very hateable. Um, you know, as far as, you know, like just who he was before you know, the three, the three visions sort of uh, showed up. Yeah. I mean, we love to hate him. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. He's no. And again, it's, it's part of, again, it's part of having that, you know, that story arc. And again, it's for me, everything about every movie or, 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 or story that I read, uh, I'm still sort of learning it and trying to dissect it and saying, why, why do I like this so much? Um, just to, for me to, to be able to say, okay, well, uh, here's why I liked it. And here's what happened. And then, you know, here's the part that I didn't know what was going to happen. So, um, you know, these are all things again, just from a horror movie fan. Um, one of my clients, this is my only other connection to horror. One of my clients was one of the, um, the uh, sort of the, the background set designers on one of the Jason Friday the 13th movies. Um, so I got, uh, you know, I've got some stories from, from, from him about, uh, you know, that experience, but um, not really, you know, much other than that. But uh, I love the idea that you're going to be exploring the rest of the city because I can personally bring you to, you know, certified spooky ass houses. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, I don't know if they'll let you, you know, record in them, but um, might give you inspiration if you're ever, uh, you know, if you're ever interested in the list, I'll, I'll gladly share it with you. Incredible. That's something yeah. I joke about with my partner because I am always looking at real estate mm -hmm. and um, I always choose the spookiest looking houses and I'm like, we should move here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, if you like those time capsule houses, and again, I, I, I don't want to sound like a, uh, you know, 70s slick suit wearing realtor <laughs> but these time capsule houses where people have not done a thing to them since 1943 um i i was just in one about two weeks ago and uh, uh some of them are just literally like sealed in plastic like uh growing up as an as as, as a kid in a, an italian family um a lot of my relatives sealed every bit of furniture in plastic and, and it's not a joke like they really did this um so a lot of these older houses like everything is like literally still sealed in its time capsule uh and, and when i bring people to look you know to look at the place and i said the word time capsule they're like you're not kidding about this i said <laughs> i'm not i wasn't kidding like even the dinner table is like somehow sealed in a in a heat sealing heat sealed plastic film of some kind i'm like i, I don't even know how they did this uh <laughs> back then or, or 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 recently or why but um again if if there's ever any of those places that i think you might uh, find interesting I'll, I'll definitely send them your way yeah i think there's something about old houses and it's, it's part of the reason why we wanted to kind of start the podcast with that which is they feel like they have such a story to tell and when it is a time capsule like that you just feel even more of a connection to the people who lived there before and just like the stories that went on within the walls and and i find it to be very creatively exciting hmm. Great. No, again, it, it sounds like, again, this is, uh, again, one of the really, you know, important reasons we've never met. Uh, Parkdale connects us uh, to some degree because uh, one of my, uh, my, my, my Queen West office is there. So I, again, I, I wanted to connect with you guys on that level and uh, would have been nice to do it in person, but uh, unfortunately uh, it's just a little easier and, and the technology uh, sort of allows us to do this this way. So until, until we can get coffee, um, this is the, the best way to do it. Um, so I wanted just to say thank you both. And is there anything that you wanted to add as far as uh, what the best way for people to listen to you guys? And of course, 
just, I, I really want you to make sure that you put this information in here is how to support, um, you know, podcasts like yours. Because for me, that's, uh, it's so important that we sort of, you know, lift each other uh, and, and, and tell each other stories. Because for me, that's the whole thing. And this is also sort of a, a weird uh, reference to, you know, we're talking about, you know, uh, storytelling and movies is I used to love back in the, again, old days where they would do crossover episodes and two really popular TV shows <laughs> would, would cross over. They don't do that anymore from, from, yeah, I don't watch TV anymore, but um, when, when, when those kind of things would happen, I'm like, oh man, this is so cool where, uh, you know, the Jeffersons and all in the family and they, you know, and they come together or whatever these shows were that did that. Um, to me, it was just something that was interesting. Uh, and, and I don't see a lot of it um, as much as I'd like to see in podcasts. So that's what uh, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, do more of is these sort of these crossover episodes. Uh, but again, what's the best way for people to listen to you guys, support you, and uh, of course, uh, maybe give them a, a little, uh, you know, a reason to uh, to listen to uh, the, you know, the, um, the, uh, the, the premiere that's coming up. Uh, well, to listening, um, we're available. The first episode of the second season will be up on September 27th. So that will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify um, across basically like all these various um, meet and mediums, apps, everything. There's so many of them now. Stitcher. Yes, and I all know, of them. I know. So it'll be up on, it'll be up on all of those. All of so, them. Okay. Uh, if <laughs> That's you, the if way to say it. Yeah, if you subscribe, we'll automatically download. Always good. It'll be on the Frequency website as well. Um, and uh, I guess uh, we also have a Patreon now. Yes. Emily, if you want to yes. share that. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you want, um, you can. All the episodes will continue to be free, and you're supporting us by listening and listening to the ads, and we very much appreciate that. If you want to support us more, because you know it is tough. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of work to put these podcasts together and, and it's our passion and we're, we're just doing it out of passion. Mm -hmm. So we have a Patreon um, and it's just patreon.com slash Parkdale Haunt. Okay. And I'm not sure when you're going to be posting this interview, but if you do sign up before September 17th, you will get an on-air shout out from me and Alex to thank you for your patronage. Okay, that's uh, that's definitely going to be, yeah, this, this I'll try to get this out uh, by the 9th at the latest, probably tomorrow more likely um but yeah I, I i definitely think it'll be out by then so that's that's a, a really nice uh, a really nice feature you're uh, you're adding in there so uh yeah i hope all of you listening take uh, full advantage of that and again support all the local podcasts if you know that you know there's a podcast that's you know trying to get their feet off the ground and um no, you know, I, I've tried to belong to as many podcast groups on facebook as possible i know a lot of them are uh you know spammy but um a lot of them are basically just you know they're having a, a weekend party this weekend because they hit 50 listens uh and, and it's 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 something where the people who do this who put a lot of passion into it um you know they 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 need that little bit of a boost so in your case for for your show uh of course you know heading over to patreon.com slash parkdale haunt uh is the way to um you know to to to, to show that and uh, hopefully all of you listening will do that um thank you so much emily thank you so much alex um i really appreciate you guys taking the time to to join me for an episode here yeah thank you so much paul this has been a pleasure thank you. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. All right. Bye.